Okay, very short video for the Cisco endless hot water or tankless hot water or instant hot water, however you want to call it. A uh, couple of things, uh, it failed on my side. Uh, you have a troubleshooting guide, so let's remove the cover first. And see what is inside. So we'll keep that short and sweet. This is your incoming water, this is cold. This is your outgoing water, hot one. And you see the red, the green blinking light. It is a statue saying that everything is okay. Uh, it failed for me at the beginning of the weekend and it was still blinking green. So it's a lot more difficult to troubleshoot. You have a troubleshooting guide that you can download on internet or you may have that already for the, the Cisco Endless Hot Water. Uh, this model is RA28 uh, for 2800 kilowatts because you have four resistance in those four chambers of 700 watt each. So anyway, uh, it was complicated to troubleshoot and get it started again. Once I disconnected the four breakers that you want to do before you start working on it, and I restarted it, it started blinking red and it's giving you a code. Uh, blink red once, once, then two times. So that was 112 and then I had 118. This was indicating uh, an issue with a temperature sensor. But initially, it was blinking green. So the thing they're advising you, you have a high limit switch. And you can see that it says right here, limit. And you see where it's connected. Those are the brown wires going to chamber number one and chamber number three. And on chamber number three, you have a little, what they call the red button supposed to be able to reset that uh, it's all the way in I was unable to press on it it was not doing anything you're supposed to uh, hear a loud click when a relay is uh, is resetting so anyway what I want to say with that is uh, what I had in the book did not help me uh, I tried to troubleshoot it using videos and forum online it did not help either and the uh, fix for that you know I, tr I try to unplug like there is saying you disconnect your breaker, you unplug one of the high limit switch connector, the brown one, then you reset it. You're supposed to press over for 10 seconds on that what called S1 button that will reset and recalibrate everything. And after over 10 seconds, when you release that button, you should hear a small click, a little noise, and it did not do anything. So I was kind of desperate so, okay what can i do what is what is wrong with that unit but anyway the one uh, 112 was indicating suddenly which was not happening at the beginning an issue on the temperature sensor number one right here you have number one you have number three number two number four and you have also a fifth one that is for the incoming water so what I did is I was I wanted to swap two temperature two temperature sensor and see if then the code will change to the third one instead of the first one. So I did that and to do that according to the procedure again you have some plates underneath that you're supposed to remove. The access is a little bit more complicated here because you have the pipe. I started with that one it was very tight. And uh, just with a regular screwdriver, I was unable, was only able to get one screw loose. So what I decided to do, which is much faster and much easier, since I wanted to swap temperature sensor one and three, I started unscrewing that one. I was holding a bucket of water just below, and I unscrew it completely, and it barely leak water because you have that back pressure. Then I started unscrewing number three with an adjustable wrench and it started pissing water out. Pretty good flow. Holding in the bucket, it will go straight in the bucket. 
and then it emptied the chambers. I was able to put number three on number one, number one on number three. I reconnected everything correctly. Uh, before you do that, by the way, you want to shut off your incoming uh, water valve, which is that one. And that one will actually regulate the flow. Uh, we'll talk about it just after. Anyway, I did that, restarted the breaker. It started beeping four times red, which always does that. Then start going green and it stay, it remained green again, saying I have no issues. I was not overexcited yet because that's what I had at the beginning of the weekend, but it was still not working. I tested the water and it was instantly hot. So I opened a faucet in the kitchen, but that one was warm right away. That's pretty exciting. So that's one solution you can try. Uh, that's the best way of troubleshooting some components is reversing those and seeing if you still get the same issue. And it looks like it's calibrated itself. When it restarted and got the four uh, red blinking, blinking light and then turned green, then suddenly I hear the noise. Mm, and it did that twice. And it looks like it recalibrated itself and started working. So anyway, that's a, that's a fix. You might want to try that first before you do anything else. And uh, just before I finish, your incoming water flow valve. This is going to regulate the flow. Make sure it's not fully open. The more flow you have in, the less efficient it will be to warm up. And that's the reason why you may have like hot and cold water or hot and lukewarm water back and forth. So don't open it. I'm only opening that halfway. And then you have like nice and warm water. And you can also adjust right here the temperature with that knob. It's about the three quarter of the, in between the min and the max. Okay, I'm hoping it's helping you. Uh, that's the reason why I wanted to do that short video. Thank you, and if you like it, you know, put a thumbs up. Thanks, bye.